Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. Today we're doing another one of these special episodes that I keep telling you guys all about. In fact, today we got James Callie Picker with it, uh, Benner. <laughs> Sorry, I should have done better homework. Well, by the way, you know, um, in case you guys don't know, um, you know, uh, he, that's Callie Picker. His name's James, and yeah, uh, he's always hanging out in the Discord. He's, he uh, leaves a lot of uh, comments in the in the in the videos that I produce and all kinds of stuff. So he's a big part of the community, and we're friends. You know what I mean? We you know we talk a lot. You know, I'm sorry if I didn't know your last name. I know I feel like a piece of shit. But anyways, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we were basically talking for like a good twenty some odd minutes, and I realized, oh crap, you know we. You know, we didn't, we weren't recording this, you know, because we've been we we're just trying to figure out the whole recording thing. So, um, as you guys already saw from last week, um, I did uh, an interview with somebody that hit me up, you know, just out of the blue on Twitter, you know, after the whole uh, crypto apocalypse thing. And then um, I already had in mind that I wanted to start talking to you know other individuals, you know, whether it's other YouTubers. Which, by the way, James is a YouTuber. Um, he's an old school YouTuber. He's been YouTubering, YouTubering, that type of thing. <laughs> for like a long time, you know, longer than me. And um, yeah, he has a huge library of videos and a lot of uh, stories to tell and a lot of uh, really cool, you know, just life stuff, you know what I mean, to talk about. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, basically I said to him, you know, he was one of the guys and there's a bunch of you guys out there, you guys are probably listening and watching it as well, um, that I, you know, um, have reached out to in order to start doing these things, have these uh, kind of podcast type things. Uh, conversations what have you interviews whatever I don't know um, and um, yeah just go with the flow so um, you know again me and Callie we're just talking about um, by the way do you prefer Callie or James either one doesn't matter James no yeah. either or just don't call me too early in the morning right yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, yeah you know me and James are just you know we talk about all kinds of things you know we were just basically talking about a bunch of life stuff and you know a bunch of other I forgot and yeah we you know basically we're both smoking right now just hanging out and um, and now I was just thinking you know what well, today's episode um, you know I, I was be before I contacted him to do this um, basically what happened was that I uh, it's Thursday night and um, this is the Friday upload you're watching this on Friday and um, you know I'm straight up honest with you you know the thing is I had not produced a video for tomorrow yet and, um, you know, I've just been crazy busy. I got the wedding. I got a bunch of clients. You know, I got a million things going on over here. But, hey, I'm not, I'm not, there's no excuse for me not to do, you know, what I love. And there's no excuse for you guys not to have an upload and that whole thing. So um, I just said, hey, you know, hey, James, what, what are you up to? You know, are you busy? And he's like, no, I'm just smoking a bowl. I'm like, perfect. You know, let's, you know, <laughs> he's like, throw a shirt on and that's it. You know, let's, uh, let's talk about, um, and that's the thing. What are we going to talk about? So you know what we're going to talk about? We're actually going to talk about what's happening in the world today a little bit um, because of the whole Iran thing. So to give a little context in case, you know, someone's been sleeping under a rock for the last five days, you must have had a really good uh, <laughs> New Year's Eve party. <laughs> but anyways, um, uh, yeah, pretty much, uh, you know, two days after New Year's, you know, the whole world thought that we were about to enter World War III. And then fast forward to today. No World War Three. In fact, it's just a bunch of the same old, same old. And, uh, you know, like I've been talking a lot about on this channel, the fact that I think that Trump and the agenda or whatever, you know, the people that are telling him what to do or whatever's happening. Um, you know, the whole a new Cold War was about to, you know, um, you know, we were about to enter into a new Cold War. And this is just another example of the Cold War, because, again, you know, the whole Hillary situation or the, Demo you know, whoever, you know, if she would have been. Uh, you know, elected or what have you, you know, the whole idea was that she was going to go straight to war, you know, with Iran and with everybody, World War Three, fuck Russia, fuck, China, fuck everybody, you know, and um, that was basically a pivot to pivot to Asia. There was a lot of things, you know, we're not going to discuss that here. But basically, you know, a lot of the, you know, um, a lot of the promises that Trump had, uh, you know, from, from the election was the fact that he said that he was going to, you know, stop war, you know, bring the troops back, all this stuff. And he hasn't necessarily done that, but I don't think he's, it doesn't look like he's sparked much, you know, more conflict. You know, sure, he's threatening Venezuela, but he's not there. You know, sure, um, you know, he's threatening other countries, but he hasn't really invaded. Look at, the, you know, he's uh, threatened and gone after Iran. And, you know, not really. Look at Syria. They pulled out the troops. So, you know, there's a lot of, you know, something's going on there. Definitely not war, not World War Three, but... Definitely, you know, with all the tensions that are happening, you know, with Russia and China, especially China, um, it seems like there is some sort of a cold war happening, especially with, you know, all the economic things and all that stuff. But, um, 
that's my take on it. And to me, that was just what I thought. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spark this up so I can shut up and I'm going to let Callie, you know, I'm going to let James talk about it and see what he has to say because that's what you guys are tuning into, right? You know, also as well, right? I mean, I know Lambo's not here. He's out. It's nighttime. He's, you know. Yeah, I was going to say, where's Lambo? Is he out on a date tonight? He's, he's actually out. Yeah, activity. he's actually out fucking partying. It's a full moon. And that motherfucker left me here and he's like, <laughs> I'm going to go probably send him, a, send him an Uber later. But anyways. <laughs> Hopefully he makes it home okay. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't make anyone go home with any new tattoos. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, hopefully he finds uh, somebody to go home with. But anyways, give, give yeah. me some uh, peace tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with, uh, with Iran, um, you know, the, this, uh, the general was a bad player. He, he, he was on our radar for quite some time, uh, back when Bush was president. And... The President Trump asked uh, uh, the government of Iraq uh, uh, if they could uh, take him out. And Iraq said no. And he said, well, fuck you, we're taking him out anyways. I don't think it was uh, properly done. I think it was uh, a little bit too hasty. Uh, there could have been other ways uh, to, to, to have done this, um, uh, to ease tensions. Um, Iran has retaliated with uh, some missile attacks uh, on two bases. I think they launched 12 missiles, five missiles hit. They hit uh, different uh, equipment. Um, some people are saying that they purposely uh, missed killing anybody to, to kind of save face. So, you know, they did some retaliation, but yeah, we slapped America's face, but don't hit us back. Uh, okay. Others are saying that it was because of an early warning system that we had set in place that got the soldiers out of the way and into bunkers. Uh, either way, I don't think this is over by a long shot. Uh, sure. and so I think uh, it's going to be uh, uh, still more things happening. I mean, um, there can be some more uh, kidnappings like in, back in the 70s. I'm, I'm old enough to I remember the Iran-Contra uh, uh, the Iran scandal, a hostage situation. And yeah, so. Okay, so real quick, I want to throw a little monkey wrench into the, that whole thing because, mm -hmm. you know, basically, um, you know, everything that you were saying, by the way, thanks for updating us, you know, with, uh, you know, the narrative, you know, basically what, uh, you know, what we all know, you know, what, what's happening, you know, what the narrative meaning, you know, that's the news, that's mm -hmm. what's out there. But what yeah. if I told you that the Soleimani guy, was the guy that um, he has the most ISIS kills under his belt of any anyone out there. And um, you would think, well, wait a minute, why would the U.S. want to kill this guy if he's the guy that's killed the most uh, ISIS guys? But wait a minute, let me, another plot twist, plot twist. Um, who is the one that signs uh, ISIS's checks? The U.S. government, all right? So basically, you know what I mean? Like, well, you know, it's, uh, you know, basically how that works is like, again, we have created, you know, um, or, you know, uh, have been instrumental in the creation of ISIS. Okay. Um, basically, yeah. Okay. So if um, we have created ISIS and then we, you know, created that situation, you know, this is long ago, we created ISIS, created the terrorists, right? And that whole thing so that we can go out there and kill these, you know, remember, mm -hmm. we create the problem when we go out there to solve the same problem. So... With that whole narrative, you know, we kind of already know that. Most of us know that. Remember, it's, uh, it's all the whole WikiLeaks thing and, you know, all the paper trail. We, you know, it's all pretty much out there. Um, so Soleimani was the guy that's been in charge. You know, he was, in, he was the guy that had the most ISIS kills under his belt. So, yeah, I mean, you're right. You know what I mean? In a sense of, like, yeah, the U.S. government was definitely after this guy for a long time. You know, again, he's the guy that's killed the most, you know, U.S. assets, right? Well, well, not, uh, yeah, well not only that, but he, you know, he, he is a – he was a devious mastermind. Sure. Uh, he was a, uh, they took out more than just a, uh, a terrorist. They took out a planner uh, where he was instrumental on, you know, I'm planning attacks and, and different things and getting people together. And, you know, don't get me wrong. This guy, he, he was a bad player, but uh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I'm not, and, I'm, 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 and, you know, I'm just saying, you, you know, that monkey wrench yeah. in there. Here's my response to that. War makes strange bedfellows. <laughs> you know, we, yeah. we've been, the U.S. has been nation building and putting people into power 
for so long. I mean, do we forget Panama, Noriega? I mean, Bolivia just a couple of like, months ago. I mean, Manila. Right uh, 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 what's the name? Um, um, Fernand, uh, uh, the Philippines, that, that uh, Marcos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, we don't learn from our mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, all we got to do is just look in the past and you'll see what shit happens in a cycle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is not going to be over yet. I think it's still more things are going to happen. Um, I think it, uh, Iran needs to be brought back in to negotiate it. You know, we don't need a, a massive war in the fucking Middle East. We don't need that. But the, get out of but, it. But I, look, I get that. I get that. But remember, the only ones, and my, again, the way I see it, the only ones that are pushing war is the U.S. I, why, why would Iran want war? And by the way, by the way, I, what you were saying earlier about, um, you know, again, the narrative, you know, it's like, oh, um, how when Iran bombed us and it didn't blow anything up and, you know, I mean, it blew something up, but it didn't kill anybody and blah, blah, blah. Listen, um, you, you're familiar with false flags, right? right? And like the fact oh, that yeah. no, we oh, blew yeah, yeah. our own shit up, right? I mean, right? Well, we, we saw pictures that, that were provided by the government. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, Remember so, that. My bad. I, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to question the the government. <laughs> Don't question the sources. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. My bad. I apologize, guys. Sorry. Sorry. I mean, I have I have nephews. Uh, two of my nephews. Uh, well, one he's he's just made his E eight in the Marines, and he's got two more years left, and and he's been to Iraq and I, Afghanistan, I think on eight tours when during those wars. And now he just got his E8, so now he's going to be uh, transferred somewhere. He was thinking he's going to be going to Japan, but who knows now? Uh, they, he's all gung ho about uh, going off and going to war. Uh, I, you know, I just don't see it. I, I, it it's not productive. And then the thing with the U.S. government, what we make money on is war. When we have war, we make money. That's how. That's, that's the bottom line. It's uh, the military-industrial complex. I mean, that's the, yeah. the machine, man. That's the fucking. We got to feed the machine. We got to keep feeding it. And that's the thing, you know. Right now, they're trying to create some sort of uh, something. You know, I'm talking about the U.S. government, the powers that be. They're trying to create something to, because remember, everyone's divided. Oh my God, the craziness of the division. Which is again, it is. We talk about that all the time. Remember, divide and conquer. That's why they're. You know, they get to do what they want. But basically. You know, just like 9-11, you know, and everybody was brought together over some catastrophe. You know, I was listening to this on Joe Rogan. You know, he was actually bringing this up. And him bringing that up on, on his major podcast, major everything, it was making me worry. He was like, oh, shit. Is he fucking announcing something? Plus, you know, New York is like, we're ready. We're getting ready. We're ready. We're, and I'm like, well, what, are you, what are you ready for what? You know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? And so to me, it's like, you know, it's things like that where then, mm, you know, like, makes me question things that make you go, mm, you know? So I don't know. That's the things that I was fucking wondering, like, what the fuck's going on? I got, I, you know, again, if all of a sudden there's some sort of, uh, again, 9 11 event, you know, you know, who knows? You know, it might bring everybody together again and bring, start, you know, drop, uh, what is it, ringing the war drums and uh, banging the war drums? And uh, <laughs> I mean, think about it. I mean, you know, I play all the time, you know, the, the Chappelle. Remember, I think I put it for you guys. Uh, you know, the Ch Bush, you know, when he, uh, Chappelle, when he did Black Bush. And, you know, when mm -hmm. he went to Iraq and the whole thing. It's the same fucking thing as right now. And I'm sure there was plenty of people, like, talking about the insanity of war and don't go to war. But we didn't have, like, the internet. We didn't have all these mediums in order for us to, like, you know, kind of spread. Like, no, don't do this. And look what happened, because I think a majority of the people were, you know, didn't want to do that. And then again, we found out later on the whole Iraq and the whole thing that everything was a lie. There was, they weren't killing babies. They weren't fucking, there was no mass destruction, uh, weapons of mass destruction. There was, no, there was nothing. You know, in fact, there was a, a lot of oil, you know, there was definitely that, you know, there's definitely a lot of land to take. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and so yeah. to me, it's the same thing. I don't, I mean, there's nothing, Iran has not done anything. The only thing Iran has done has told the U.S. to go fuck itself. And that's it. And the whole fucking, the whole idea of a fucking nuclear deal and shit like that, no country should be telling any other country what to do. Basically, that's it. And and the thing is, remember, Iran is spinned as enemy number one, but I can show you plenty of fucking travel videos and videos about Iran and Iran's like such a beautiful place. I mean, are you kidding me? I want to, I want to go visit Iran. I, I mean, and I I know. I yeah. listen. I'm. A, I'm a. I remember. I used to be a chef, right? I, I should make that a tagline. I should. I used to be a chef anyway. But the point is, is that you know, like, I, 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 Iranian food is really good. 
I mean, oh, yeah. it is the middle of the fucking, uh, remember, what was it? The Silk Road or whatever the fuck. I mean, oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's why we want to take over that. Wait a minute. Didn't they, didn't well, that one guy was talking about we need to take over Syria and Iraq and, and Iran and what was that guy? I forgot his name. Mohammed? No, 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 no. I'll play it for you now. I'm going to have to say something because I know I'm saying I'm talking so much. Oh, I'm getting no, so stoned. I, I got so stoned ahead of time, but I was just thinking all. I was I was responding to everything you were saying. Uh, but yeah, you were talking about uh, Iran didn't do much for us. Uh, actually, they did. They gave us a lot of money. We made uh, we got rich off them uh, when we kept Iran and Iraq when they were at war with each other. We made sure both sides were equal. We yeah. sold arms and weapons to both sides so they they couldn't win and nobody could lose, and they'd keep fighting. And we just keep selling arms back and forth. Yeah, money, money. That was money train. Uh, yeah. yeah, man. I mean, that's basically it. I mean, you got it. And Go and, and uh, well, I don't know. I was just thinking that uh, what are the what can the what are their capabilities? Are they going to do a nine eleven type thing? I don't think so. No, they won't do that. They're going to submit uh, kind of like caliphates or caliphates to their local uh, militia people. And they're going to do uh, terrorist strikes like that, that way. Oh, no, no, no. Different no. countries. Listen, listen, and... listen. The whole 9-11 thing. The whole 9-11 thing is not Iran doing anything to us. I mean, come on. I mean, look, I don't want to get into that, but we know who did 9-11. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, but okay. I meant their capabilities. Right. I don't think – no, they're not going to do something like that. Uh, uh, they've already done the conventional thing. Now they're going to go – you, you don't two, think two. the U.S. would do another one of those, another, another red flag? Really, after all of those mass shootings that, that keep happening, after all this shit that – Really? Are you kidding me? That's why when this guy was talking about it, when Joe Rogan brought it up, I was like, oh, oh, oh. He's, just getting everybody, he's getting everybody ready. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm being 100,000% honest, man. I'm not, I, I really do think that, you know, they are trying, they would, they would do that. I mean, what, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm just waiting three more here, months before I leave this country. Here, let me, let me play this real quick. Okay. Let me play this because this is something that we can play. It's audio, but I want to play this. Okay, this is uh, U.S. Army General Wesley Clark. Oh, I respect him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So listen to this. Okay, this is back in back in the day. I want to say, well, whatever. Back in the day. Oh, oh and then one one comment I want to remind remind you of. Uh, in two thousand six, uh, Trump had came on and did an interview in regards to Obama uh, uh, coming on and saying you know, that he's going to get us into war with Iran. And that he's, watch, you just watch, it's just before election, and he's going to start a war or attack them so he can get reelected. It was just ironic that that's exactly what he did. It was like wagging the dog. Yeah, man. So you'll see here. Let me, let, let me, I want to see if I can play. Man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because I'm going to see if I can play. I want to see if I can. But yeah, so while you're looking for that, I'll, I'll say one other thing. So uh, in the meantime, Andrew Yang for president. <laughs> I think he's uh, the best one. In my oh opinion. yeah, you know why, why? Why do you say that? Just as all of his ideas, not just just the, not just the uh, the universal uh, income, but uh, how he's going to pay for it. Also, the uh, healthcare system, where he's not going to get rid of individual uh, uh, or private insurance. He's just going to make it more competitive. He's going to have a government system where you can sign into. But uh, yeah, it's just going to make. It competitive yeah, to work uh and competition is always good so. okay i'm all for it i just want my thousand bucks a month you know that can go, yeah. go a long way out here in mexico <laughs> and they you know he's saying that that will be stacked all you right. know so like if a person that's on uh like social that. security like myself it it's not going to be one or the other no it'll be stacked on top of that okay and that's from what I heard is like uh, on welfare, like the person who gets on is on welfare, mm -hmm. uh, you can't stack that. Okay. But if uh, if you have you have an option to sign into it, so like if you get uh, twelve hundred dollars a month on welfare, or you'd get this thousand dollars a month on on the income, you can opt out of it and get the twelve hundred still. All right. It's not gonna. He's not making it to where it's gonna hurt some. He's oh, trying to make it to where it helps people. Is twelve hundred now? Oh, I don't know. I don't oh, okay. Know. I thought it was a thousand or something, whatever. But hey, no, no, no I mean, if somebody, okay. I meant somebody like if a welfare person, if a person sure. gets welfare money. Okay. You know, if they get twelve hundred dollars a month, you know, they're not going to get an extra thousand dollars a month, but okay. they don't have to sign up for that thousand. They can just keep getting their twelve hundred, but forget that extra thousand. 
Okay. Okay. All right. Well, they real quick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the I'm gonna give the 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 screen over to General Mattis for a minute. Okay. So that he All can right. tell us uh, what's up. All right. General let me, Clark. Let me see how this works. Mattis or Clark? I think Mattis. Yeah. No, Wesley Clark. Sorry. Yeah. My man. All right. I'm high too. All right. Let's try this again. All right. Let's uh, let's let's let's, uh, let's see him talk. Hold on. Ah. That's, all right. I'm like the worst at this. All right. Let's do this. Because I've been through the Pentagon right after 9/11. About 10 days after 9/11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the Joint Staff who used used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, "Sir, you gotta." Come in, you got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. He said, he said I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And uh, he said, I guess if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs from the Secretary of Defense office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, okay. starting with Iraq, and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. Yeah, yeah. Basically, this look. It's a memo that describes yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq, my fellow citizens, at this hour. But yeah, basically, and again, we've done yeah, right Right when 9-11 hit, uh, the first thing on uh, uh, Cheney, Dick Cheney's mind, and Rumsfeld, was, okay, let's link Iraq to this, period. That's how we have to get it to, so we can justify it. They were gunning for Iraq at way, ever since. Ever since, yeah. Oh man, I'm sorry. I'm trying to stop the oh, stop share. There we go. There we go. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've hope, they've been uh, the Rumsfeld and 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 uh, Dick Cheney. Uh, they've been neck and neck since Nixon uh, and Vietnam War. Yeah. Uh, they've they've wanted to go back to war for a long time. Look, uh, the way the way I see it, yeah, the, the way I see it is that they do want to go to war with Iran. You know, the powers that be. They're trying everything humanly possible to go to war with Iran. But the thing is that at this moment in time, you know, we, um, what is it, like Russia and um, the, China have been stepping in. And I think, I honestly think that our army isn't what it used to be. I think that something's going on there in that sense. And that because Ru it seems like Russia, especially Russia, has been able to push us back, you know, in many places. And uh, for, I mean, seriously, if you look out at Syria, they pushed us out of there. Um, if you look at Venezuela, there's a reason we're not there. Um, and things like that. I think, you know, there's a lot of places. And when I was in Cuba, I saw Russian battleships there. You know what I mean? Other people have too. Um, you know, there's a lot of things like that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it, it's like, the, the, you know, the Russian military, It's I'm not saying that they're bigger, okay? But, you know, uh, in the sense of technology-wise, um, you know, I, I keep bringing this up a lot because I think that, you know, maybe something like this could happen. This has happened many times in history before. But, you know, something like... Uh, Back in, you know, the Spanish-American War, um, again, you know, we got to remember that the Spanish Armada, the biggest fucking naval army in the, ever, you know what I mean? Um, the, you know, it was, you know, it was the equivalent of us, all right? Mm -hmm. And then the U.S., you know, with a little bit of technology, we invented this thing called the Ironclad, you know, the first metal ship ever. And we basically had like three of them against the Spanish Armada. And we destroyed them. Why? Because, you know, we're just big metal hunk of, you know, hunk of shit. You know what I mean? Like just going. <laughs> and, you know, these fucking huge wooden boats, wooden vessels. It didn't matter how many cannonballs they threw at it. Nothing was going to happen. They couldn't dent it. And then this thing was just, uh, literally all I had to do was just run into it. <clears throat> and that's yep. it. Hunk the shit. 
and the things just kept going. And, and like, I mean, you know, it, also it had weapons and shit, but basically all I had to do was just, you know, run into things. And um, you, all of a sudden, the Spanish Armada was rendered useless by just a few ships, you know, and, and just some technology that the Americans had. So, and this happened many times in history. So, you know, right now, think about it, you know, China, especially, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I do not put it past the Chinese that they have not been able to reverse engineer our own military technology. And the reason I say that yes. is because if you know where are all the chips for all the military equipment comes from, it comes from fucking China. So you're going to fucking tell me that they don't already reverse engineer our shit? They do. <coughs> Plus, remember, a lot of these fucking countries have been able to buy our shit outright. So it's not like they even had to produce the fucking stuff. They could just buy it from us and then reverse engineer it. So what I'm, saying, what I'm saying with the reverse engineering is not like, oh, they can build a, a copy. No. What they can do is they can build an off switch. Click. So again, if they can reverse engineer... Um, the 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 mightiest of battleships, the mightiest of fucking you know fly uh you know spider pilots, what fighter planes, whatever the fuck we have, they can reverse engineer it and basically have an off switch from long distance. Well, that would kind of render our military pretty useless really quick, right? And well, that's why you kind of still learn there. how to use the bow and arrow. Well, yeah, I mean, look, look. The basically, I, I the the reason I, I I thought of this theory was because I had heard someone else talk about it, some military guy on some other, you know, channel. Mm -hmm. And he was actually, and he was actually talking about the fact that, you know, this is a, this is something that is going on. And so it made me starting to think, oh, wait a minute. You know what I mean? And started putting a lot of things together because, you know, from a history perspective, just a lot of perspectives. And, um, and it's basically, again, if you know where, you know, the fucking parts are made in China, we know that. So look, the, the, the end, the, the, the point I'm making is the fact that um, that coupled with, a Russian army that is, you know, building up. Okay. They haven't had a war. They haven't had anything in a long time. Putin is a growing, you know, Russia is a growing country. Putin he has a military. He's a military background. He's getting a little itchy trigger, trigger finger himself. All right. And he's not going to start no shit. But if the U S starts some shit, Russia's either dying to get involved because again, they're in Venezuela. They're in Syria. They're all over the place. But again, what do you think? What do you think about all this shit? You know, that's just. I think Russia. Russia's uh, more intelligent than us. Uh, okay, they yeah, are sure. savvy. They, they are uh, sitting back, not passively. They are doing some some moves, but they are pretty much just sitting back and just letting uh, the U.S. destroy themselves. Uh, they're they're primed to be a superpower with China. Man, that's I don't know who's gonna win on that one. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. well but the, thing uh, China, the thing with China is more like the it's a partnership between China and Russia. You know, it's not it's you know they're not really neither like man like it's not. Like, I don't see that. Are they are they partners? Well, they are. You know, they're they're right now. Russia and China are like you know best brothers literally okay i didn't know uh, yeah yeah they are they're they're best brothers and uh and basically you know they're teaming up against team usa and so you know china you know has their you know benefits you know what i mean they have what you know you know they have their what is it like uh, their powers their whatever and russia has what they have you know and so you know for example china doesn't have like the kgb you get what i'm saying russia has a kgb they have like the fucking Brazil. you know these you don't you don't think china has their own uh, secret service their intelligence service hell yeah oh yeah, do. yeah china does but i mean come on you're not going to compare to the kgb you know everybody has their thing look china has a lot of us also again china, their, china china's intelligence is so good we don't even know the name of it sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right that's a good one that's a good one shit shit i could be a fucking plant look i'm wearing red and white mother right anyways no but look the point is is that that's how good they are <laughs> so but like uh, but no but the reality is like you know i think china i mean you, you could be right you know what i mean i'm not gonna say no but but the reality is is like i think china has like the ability to like reverse engineer shit you know what i mean they have you know they have remember mm -hmm. they, they build our shit they have a, you know again they have their advantages you know they have you know their what they can throw in the ball you know in the ball game and and again i think right again that they, they right now look china again just from an economic perspective you know just economics russia wants to be number one okay china doesn't want to be number one china right now remember they're bigger population wise and they're just bigger so to them you know what i mean they actually 
right now, I mean, this is serious, you know, for real. This is like talks that happen in the G20 and all these fucking things all the time. What, what's basically happening is this. China is functioning at a, a, a first world, um, you know what I mean? Like economics, you know, status, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. They're not first world. They, you know, they're basically still third world. So the world, you know, basically, you know, the U.S., Canada, Europe, and a lot of these nations, you know, they want China to, hey, now you're part of the first world. So you got to pay your first world taxes type of shit. And China's like, ah, fuck no. No, 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 no. We're third world. Go fuck yourself. So as third world, as they qualify, you know, again, just like if you're poor, you qualify for benefits. <laughs> and if you're rich, you got to pay your taxes. So that's basically how it works on the, on, the, on the big stage as well. And so because of that, China, they're, they, they're in no hurry. They don't want, you know what I mean? They don't want to be number one because, again, being number one would implement their first world, right? And so many things like that. So basically, they're sitting back because even when it comes to the currency, they want the dollar to fucking, you know, take its time to fucking collapse because in the meantime, they're using those dollars to buy up the U.S. and buy up, you know, the, you know, buy up the world because, remember, they're using those useless dollars, you know, again, to come to the U.S. and spend them there. Because again, since no other country wants to use these dollars, they have to. They come. They come to the U.S. and that's where they're buying property, buying farms, buying everything in the U.S. Oh yeah. So you know, there's a lot of like things like that happening. You know, Russia themselves. You know, they're just interested in being Russia. You know, being number one. And so, and you know, with their, you know, their whole thing there. And China's more like, yeah, of course. You know, well, go ahead, do your thing, boys. You know what I mean? Like, and then you know, each one has their. They take care of each other. Now, you know, there's not to say there's not, you know you know, strife or there's uh, differences there. But again, you know, when you're looking at the G20 and you're looking at a lot of these world meetings um, and lately you're seeing, you know, all the players, you know, all the, what is it? Like the usual suspects, like the U S and Europe and shit like that. And now all of a sudden now Russia and China, they're not allowed. They're doing their own thing. Oh yeah. 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 So, you know, that's the thing, you know, and then, then, so a lot of countries now that, you know, are, are are, are trying to figure out what country to align with, you know, whether they're going to align with China, Russia, or stay with the U.S. Yeah, that's just like with Taiwan, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, Taiwan is to stay with the U.S. Yeah, for obvious reasons. They, well, yeah, but uh, thinking about it strategically and, and they, yeah. location, <laughs> they better fucking go with China. <laughs> but the thing with Hong Kong, look, the thing with Hong Kong, you know, we are fermenting all that extra violence so that you know, because remember in Hong Kong, they're like, please, the U.S. come and take over. And, and so the U.S. is like, yeah, sure, we'll be right over. And China's like, oh, no, get the fuck out of here, you know? Wouldn't they? Think about the U.S. having a military. Uh, right there. Well, see, with, with, with Hong Kong, we didn't, you know, that was British. You know, that was, hey, oh, hey yeah, Britain, yeah. that's your, your problem, you know, for U.S. saying that. But now Taiwan, that's our problem. That's going to be a different thing. Let's see what they do. But we, you know, but we, the China, but the U.S. wants that asset there. You know, the U.S. wants, are you kidding me? You know, we got fucking guns pointed at China, you know? Get me? Yeah, China can't, you know, China can't fucking bug. China can't go to Mexico and point guns over here. Maybe they will should the U.S. starts getting stupid. But I mean, not now, not yet. But right now, I mean, there's Russian assets in Mexico and Latin America. Venezuela, right? You know, the Russia flew into Venezuela. So uh, don't tell me they're not flying into other countries. Ecuador, Peru, you know, yeah, Nicaragua. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Man, I mean. So, I mean, what do you think? What do you think about this whole situation? I was, to be honest, I was thinking about something else completely different. I was thinking what about What do you hex. think about? Talk about whatever you're thinking about. Who cares? Go ahead. Whatever hex coin. Doing. Hex. Oh, the hex coin? You want to talk about a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Talk about some hex coin. Sure, that's a, that's a curveball there. Have anyway, you heard so anything for anyone out anything. there you know, doesn't know what the fuck we mean, um, hex coin, okay? Um, by the way, this is now we're going to switch over to cryptocurrency. We're making a hard right. Okay. Yeah, sorry. You know, we got to put that meme, you know, like, you know, keep talking about, what is it? What's that meme? Again? State or, or no, it's, it's uh, Albuquerque, state or, left. Or, you know, talk about something completely different. Right, we're going to, okay. So talk about the hex coin. So what is the hex coin? Okay. For anyone that doesn't know, um, there's this guy out there. His name is Richard Hart. He's a OG in the crypto space. And, uh, you know, long story short, he pulled the Roger Ver and, uh, he created his own coin. Now, you know, Roger Ver, you know, was a, guy <laughs> Bitcoin, was a guy behind Bitcoin Cash. And at the very least, you know, he, you know, he kind of like Litecoin and other coins like that. You know, it's kind of something similar, you know, to Bitcoin. And it's a, it's, a, it's a currency and whatever. At least it's serving some sort of purpose. But this other hex coin thing, it's, it's not a coin. 
it's a it's a token. It's an ERC twenty token. And if anyone knows anything about what an ERC twenty token is, which I don't think a lot of people did, um, the basically what an ERC twenty token is is just like a it's a contract that says um, this is a token that will represent a future share of whatever project or company this is. But if in the meantime of the company becoming a company or the project becoming a project in the birthing stage, if in that birthing stage um, something happens and everything goes kaput, meaning, you know, someone steals the money or someone, uh, you know what I mean, uh, mis malinvests it or whatever the fuck, the project fails, any, any of the above and all of the above, um, then they, the, the own, you know, the owners of the, the <coughs> are not, owned anything again let me repeat the owners of these tokens the owners of bat the owners of any any erc20 token out there they are not owed anything so again basically an erc20 token is the again it's just token token representing something and the contract behind these erc and again look it up look it up all every the look the the contract between the ethereum contract between yeah, that's right. The Ethereum contract behind every ERC20 token means, I mean, says that if the project fails, you lose all the money, no money, whatever, that they don't owe you shit. Okay? No, nothing. Period. Buff gets done. So that's why a lot of people that are investing in shit coins, when the whole thing goes to kaput, especially things that are ERC20 tokens, they really have no leg to stand on. They can't even, nothing. You know what I mean? Even if they sue them, there's nothing to sue on. I mean, they can sue anything. You know, you can always, whatever. But, but anyway, so going back to Hex. So this guy, Richard Hart, you know, all about Bitcoin and the technology and all this shit, he, he, he launches Hexcoin. And then it's, uh, and then when you, you know, I'm thinking, oh, it's a, uh, most people would have thought it's like, oh, it's on blockchain or something like that. But no, it's a ERC20 token on the Ethereum blockchain. And, as he's releasing it and he's talking about it, he's talking all about the fact that this thing is a fucking uh, scam. A scam. I mean, not a scam. He wasn't saying it was a scam. He was saying that he understands scams. And because he understands scams, this token is better than all scams. Better than all tokens that would be a scam or something. And yeah, like because, because I know what a scam is and I know how a scam works. That's why this is not a scam. Right. You know. What? <laughs> Basically verbatim, that's what he said. And uh, and again, you can look it up. You know, he's uh, he's out there. He's still doing this thing. Anyways, the point that through all this is just I want to give it a backstory to someone, so anyone out there that might not know. Sorry about that. I apologize. What was that? Holy shit. Anyways, um, <laughs> so keep it one hundred percent here. Some bad tacos I had today. Anyways, so <laughs> literally. Anyways, so um. Yeah, so basically the whole hex token thing, um, everyone was saying from the very beginning that this thing was a scam and why are you doing this and blah, blah, blah. Don't invest in this. And <coughs> everybody and their mother, everybody was saying, don't invest in this. This thing was a scam. And he would get it. And so Richard Hart was saying, no, it's not a scam. <laughs> to fights with people and shit like that. Anyways, anyways, this, this only, when, did, when did this thing launch? Like a month ago or some shit like that? Oh, a little bit longer than that because they had uh, already people invested in it and they had what was the 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 when you purchased the coins you can buy as much as one or or and then even if uh, when you come in we'll give you more coins and but you had to hold on to them for 333 days right to get, then, to get an investment but yeah basically yeah. look basically i guess what happened let me just and then we'll continue with that story so um, yeah it was about about a month and a half ago but yeah but what happened was that basically all of the wallets in which all of these tokens were in, they got emptied out, cashed out. That's it. And um, yeah, so basically either someone stole all the tokens or Richard Hart cashed out all the tokens and that's it. Game over. That's it. It's done. But anyways, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, you go and explain the whole hex thing now. You know what I mean? Because again, this is only like a couple months old, but as you said, there's people involved for a long time. But how is this whole hex thing supposed to work? But yeah, it was, I, and, and it was just, he, he had explained it like, uh, this is pretty much a pyramid scheme. You have hex coins, you get other people to invest into it. And then when you get those other people to invest, you not, you know, they don't uh, only get coins, but you get coins too. And for all the people that they bring in. And he's explaining to this, that this is a pyramid scheme type thing, but it's not because this one's going to make money. You know, but you just have to wait the 333 days. But yeah, you'll see. And, and he was mimicking people and mocking 
uh, reporters that, that called him out saying, wait a minute, you're just talking gibberish, especially what was her name? Uh, Naomi, uh, yeah, Naomi Brock. Yeah. Yeah. She, uh, tried to interview him and called him out saying, you know, what you just said is just gibberish. Right. Pretty much. And, and he's just, he's a great talker. Oh yeah. He, 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 he but, but if you listen to it and dissect what he says, it's just going around in a circle making no commitment of nothing. Yeah, you can't bullshit and, a bullshitter, man, you know? That's, yeah, and I thought yeah. he just made no fucking sense, and he's just pulling everybody's wool over everybody's eyes, and this is a scam. Well, but but yeah, people so, invested. And so back to the whole thing, you know what I mean? Like, again, like, I know this guy in the sense of, like, I don't know him personally, but I know who he is and the type of guy he is because he's from Miami. That's a white guy from Miami. And remember, there's not many white, when I grew up, there wasn't that many white people out there. And there was a lot of Hispanics, you know? And so he was one of the guys that would hang out there, you know, and do his thing. So you can already imagine, you know, the kind of guy he was. You know, he was, uh, you know, again, you know, he was one of those guys, you know, like, how do I say, like, uh, a little rough around the edges, you know? And, uh, and you know, he's not the typical, um, but anyways, um, the point. Well, you know, and then sometimes, you know, that's why I think sometimes we do need a war because we have so many stupid people in this world that still <laughs> fall for scams like this. Sure. I mean, hey. It's a fucking scam. Yeah, look, look, but the point, yeah, you're, you're, look, the point I'm making with this guy is the fact that he created a scam, right? And he created it on the ERC20 token system because he knows that if the day comes where he wants to just cash out, see ya. That's it. I mean, and he's protected by the contract. Yeah. So where do you think he went to? No, he didn't go anywhere. He's around. He's just—he's probably gonna keep talking about. Who knows what he's gonna do? He was on video. He was on live today. Oh, was so, he? Yeah. So uh, really, he's not going anywhere. Listen. So what I'm saying is, listen. This guy's from Miami. Okay. The motherfucker. He don't give a fuck. Okay. Listen. listen. Our motto. Our motto in Miami is, we don't give a fuck until I give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like I don't give a fuck. No, 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 no. That's not. I'm high. No, no, no. I don't give a. Fuck. No, it's like this. It's a motto. It's like this. Horrible. I'm fucking horrible. Anyway, the motto is this. I don't give a fuck, but I give a fuck. And so the point is, it's like, he doesn't give a fuck. So that's but the I give a fuck. why he's doing yeah. this. So he basically knows that all he had to do was create a scam and then tell people it wasn't a scam, right? And tell people, hey, look, this is the best way to make money because there's a lot of greedy motherfuckers out there and sell the fucking idea. And then do that whole thing like uh, Bobby Graham, you know, what is it, that fucking evangelist guy and, and Amway. Amway is a fucking pyramid scheme, but it's still in business. You know what I mean? So they know what to do. So he knows what to do, too. That's what I'm saying. These guys are lone sharks. These guys are shady as fuck. You know, and again, the white guy down there, look, I'm not saying, like, again, the white guy that would live in Miami would be like the lawyer or a politician or uh, the guy at the bank laundering the money. You know what I mean? So he's that kind of guy. You know what I mean? Like, now, obviously, he's in the tech and computers. So he's going to figure out a way to, you know, scam, do the scam or whatever. Um, but using his uh, his abilities throughout that way, he talks about it. If you listen to his interviews about his, uh, his what he used to do in Miami, it's like, oh, bro, this guy's scam central. I mean, look, I'll tell you one of the things he used to do. And again, I, I don't, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it. I've done it. All right. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I, mean, I encourage people to do it too. It's a great idea. Look, but one of the examples, of, it's not a scam, by the way, but it was a little bit, yeah. You know, so one of the things he would do is, like, we had this local store called Brands Mart. That's how I know this guy, you know, from my neighborhood. You know, it's like, come on. <laughs> it's like the only <laughs> – so, but anyways, so he would go to he – would, he, would, he would go, and he would literally um, – and um, okay, he would go on, on Craigslist or on, on, you know, wherever the fuck that people would sell used shit, and then he would post ads for – brand new stuff you know what i mean like whatever the fuck uh laundry uh what is it like a washing machine right. stove, uh, a refrigerator all these things okay at the sale price of brands mark and so when people would be like hey i'm interested i want to buy the whole fucking thing he would go to a fucking brands mark and get the fucking thing you know what i mean and bring it to the fucking guy and make the sale if for whatever reason the guy didn't want to buy it they just go return it you know the fucking right you know, <laughs> you know, fit, you know whatever. anyways and, and that's it and so he would do that shit all the time and fucking make money and he would do a lot of things like that you know what i mean and so to me yeah. it's like, hmm. it's called drop shipping yeah 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 so what i'm saying is that the point is that like I, you know this guy, there's nothing wrong with what he's doing in the sense that like look i would not do it because i could not sleep at night but all i'm saying is that at the end of the day there's nothing wrong with what he's doing because it's totally legal and there's fucking morons and suckers like you said they're keeping the fall for it 
so why the fuck not? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah, but at least they got a product and they yeah. got something. They knew what they were paying for, and they were the customer was. Uh, yeah, it's uh, gambling. Uh, it's gambling. Yeah. This whole fucking thing right now, it's like it's like you're going into fucking Vegas. You know, you can go in there and win some money, but how many people fucking lose their ass? And what are they gonna fucking take? Uh, take the the fucking Mirage Hotel, the fucking uh, what is it? No, but as yeah, long as you know that there's a risk and that it's a gamble, right? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. 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 And so people, yeah, just, just a, know, people are just really greedy, and we know that they're everywhere. And unfortunately, um, they fall for these things. And uh, this is what gives crypto a bad name. But that's why he's one of these guys that he doesn't give a fuck. And he's at the, and look and look. The point is, is that I think that a lot of people that have been in this space for a long time, like these guys. There's, these are this is happening over and over again with the people that have been in the space for a very long time. And I think that what's happening is that they realize that yeah, this technology is fucking groundbreaking, but it's more like the internet. You feel me? And to them, they're like, you know what? Why not make a few bucks now? Because there's nothing really, you know what I mean? At the, at the end of the day, this is something that's kind of like an uncontrolled beast, and we don't really fucking know where the fuck we're going here. And, yeah, yeah, that's, and that's well, that, that, that's where that's we're just, at. I mean, and uh, yeah. That's why I, I, I still have hope for humanity. But, uh, oh, I do too. I do too. You know I mean, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a very positive and optimistic. And by the way, guys, I know you're probably going to say it in the comments, but I'm fucking going to say it. I know I've been talking a lot and I took over the conversation and I fucking, I'm one of those fucking guys. i sorry. That's why I got a fucking YouTube channel and I fucking can't stop doing what I do. But I'm sure James doesn't care. And if he does, um, he can tell me right now. My, I apologize, bro. I'm sorry for being a piece of no, shit. No, we're good. We're good. We're having a good conversation See? here. See? Um, we're both we're getting we're high. Good. Yeah. I jump in when I need to. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 we should call this a fire chat and fireside chats. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. Just chatting with Jose, right? Just like, eating, eating some shit, smoking some blunts, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> smoking some blunts, smoking some bowls, coughing up a lung, you know? Hey, make sure you keep one of those lungs, bro. I mean, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Went down the wrong side. So yeah, man. I, I mean, is there anything else you want to talk about today, or any, anything else you want to? I think well, we I got a check in the mail today. That's you got a cool. check in the mail. Yeah, for twenty bucks. Oh fuck I'm, yeah! Uh, doing a survey for Nielsen's. Ah, oh really? That that exists still? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said, hey, here's a, here's a survey for a week. Uh, for how much uh, do you listen to the radio? <laughs> okay. Radio. Fuck. What the hell is that? Fuck, man. I, I, I didn't even know they still did those Nielsen ratings and shit, man. Yeah, yeah. So the, I put down, um, yeah, none. Okay. And that's <laughs> For it. the whole week and send it off and they sent me 20 bucks. Is that oh. cool? Damn, man. You know, I'm, I'm fucking thinking, you know, like, um, I was going to say, no, actually, I had to, like, I'm, I'm high as fuck already, too, you know? I was just going to say, damn, I'm stoned. Phew. No, but I was actually going to say, it's like, no, um, that check, I thought that check was from back in your child acting days, and you were just getting some resistance. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't, I never, never acted. Oh, no, no, okay, all right. Tell me, I know I you done. do have a lot of, you have a lot of stories to tell us, right? What have I done? I was, uh, started off as a, a military paratrooper. Uh, paralegal in the 82nd Airborne Division. Uh, got to travel all around the world. And that was five years of interesting times. In fact, found out, I don't know if you can read that. My phone. What was that? So the tattoo that? I got said, uh, Melissa, you're one and only. Oh, okay. Found out uh, my I had a daughter and a granddaughter. Oh, wow. And, uh, she found me just uh, last year, or it's 2020 now, so the year before last. Uh, yeah, so I'm, that's why I moved out here in Michigan. But uh, yeah, she was uh, conceived in Germany when I was when I used to was in the army. Okay. Um, oh. Yeah, I was there in 1990. Saw the wall come down. That was wow, wow, that wow! What a sight, man! Amazing. You saw the fucking Berlin Wall. Come I down. had a piece of it. Wow. I, I forgot all about it when I got my stuff shipped back to me after I got it back from uh, Germany and I left. Uh, reached into my one pants pocket and they had a bunch of Dutch guilders and a piece of the wall. Wow! Wow! But I, I had lost it. Yeah, yeah. That was that was that was some interesting times. Yeah, man. And then uh, yeah, it was uh, got out. I was a paralegal and I couldn't damn handle law anymore, so I went and got a degree in accounting. And became a bookkeeper, and then an office manager, then a corporate vice president for a 
uh, credit corporation. Cool. And then, uh, then they offered me, a, uh, they were going to close down their Oakland office where I was working in California and offered me a position in Parsippany, New Jersey. They said, uh, no, don't think so. I'm a California boy. No reason for me to go back east. Uh, so no, turn that down. And a buddy I was playing disc golf with. I used to play disc golf a lot. And he was a private investigator. Oh, cool. He said, private you, you should, Yeah. He said, uh, yeah, he does uh, Sub Rosa surveillance. I said, Sub Rosa, what's that? It said, it's under the, under the nose, like uh, back in Caesar's time. It's, okay. it's doing, uh, following somebody without their knowledge of being followed and filming whenever you can, and testifying about it in court. So, okay. So that uh, you can either do it or you can't. You know, it's not something you can be taught. It's just got to be able to follow somebody. So he took me in into uh, downtown San Francisco and switched over. I was driving and said, okay, see that guy coming out of the store right there? Let's follow him all day long. So, yeah, I was following around all day long in San Francisco. It was pretty cool uh, and was good at it. So I was a private investigator for 10 years. Had my own business in the Bay Area. Um, never had to advertise for, for work. Uh, constantly busy. Wow. I had to do like 22 days on, take a day off. Mm. Do another 11 days, take a day off. Another eight days, take a day off. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Traveled all over the place in the state. And yeah, that was some fun times. I, I did uh, on my YouTube channel. It's called uh, Clips of a PI. I put some of the different uh, cases I did. I uh, did see some of those. I did see some of those, actually. I did see that. You know what I mean? I remember that. that uh, yeah, I was like, oh, wow, that is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, which one was it? Was it the, the no chicks idea. moving? I have no uh, idea. It's some random uh, one. And it was you. It was like the film of you. You know what I mean? Like the, you know, whatever the, the evidence was, the, the recording of someone doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I put up like five or six of them. But uh, one of them I remember was, uh, it was this chick. She was injured. Uh, she was a a, a, a a private dancer at a private club in San Diego and got hurt because there was a, a fight in the club with two guys and, and it rolled up on stage and she fell over. And she said she got hurt and suing them for millions of dollars and workers' comp and all that. Moved up to the Bay Area, was going to school. And so they wanted me to follow her around. So, yeah, she worked at this, God, I, I didn't put that part in the video. It was called Club Trigger. Okay. In the Castro District. Okay. It, wow. it was this gay bar that I had to go into, and I walked in there. Oh, fuck. <laughs> they were just starting to look me up, down, like a piece of meat. Like the blue oysters. Uh, yeah, it was just like that. Uh, so I went straight uh, to the bartender and started flirting with the bartender all night because I knew he wouldn't go home with anybody, right? Uh, <laughs> That's the safest person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought, oh, fuck, I can't get do anything in here. But uh, she had uh, was moving. And so I got her moving all of her stuff with her other stripper friends and bouncers from this other club she was working at, this club trigger. And yeah, it was a a nice payday on that. I mean, I got her running across the street back and forth. Uh, yeah, I can't do anything. I'm hurt. My back is hurt. So, and that was uh, settled out of court. So. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, was, man. You know what? Yeah, as a matter uh, of fact, you know, I would love, I would love to hear more of your stories, and I'm sure others would love to hear more of your stories as well. In fact, maybe you know we can leave down in the comments. What you guys enjoyed the most about today's broadcast, whether it was the beginning, the middle, the end, the whole thing, none of it, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, let us know. Let me know. All right. So that way we can do more of these. Because I am gonna, well, I'm gonna do more of these anyway. But um, yeah, you know, so we can uh, play it by ear. But still, look, regardless, I want to hear more of his stories. And uh, you know, regardless, what we can do now is that can can we check out some of your stories on your channel? 
Yeah, help yourself. Yeah, it's on okay. CaliPicker.com. So, so, okay, Cali so, Picker is the YouTube. So Cali Picker. So yeah, so I know he was saying, and I fucking interrupted. I talk over everybody, but anyways, but yeah. So he has his stories on his channel, but. You know, again, if you guys enjoy them, you know, and uh, you guys want to hear more and you guys enjoy our banter and our conversation, you know, maybe I can have him on here some more so we can hear more of his stories. I mean, I want to hear his stories anyway. We might as well record it so we can all hear it. And it'll be cool. You know what I mean? But he, regardless, as he said, he has stories on his channel and he has like the PI stuff, right? The private detective stuff. And you got a bunch of other cool stuff on there because I have checked it out. It's actually pretty cool. And, um, and uh, yeah, you know what I mean? He uploads all the time. And, uh, right, you, you still upload, right? Oh. I try to uh, because of what, uh, what's going on with me. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I've yeah. Been limited. I've been limited on taking video. But, yeah, I try, to. Fact, I try to do some ma- uploads. As, as a matter of fact, he has an interesting, very interesting life story situation that maybe you guys would be interested in. But I'm not going to tell you. No spoiler alerts. In fact, what you should do is go check out his channel. So that way, right? I think it's the first video because I remember the first video, as soon as I get to your channel, bam. So you get to know all about him and what he's about and what, you know, what's going on there. And um, again, that's why he's here. He's, uh, he's my friend. You know, we're cool. He's hanging out. In fact, he's thinking about moving out here to Mexico. He's debating that because, right, of the whole family situation. But, you know, again, we can... We'll talk about that more later on another episode, another show. we got to wrap this one up. Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. So please go to his channel and please like, please subscribe, please uh, like, please hit the bell like on his channel. All right, go check it out. And then do that here too. Please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell like on. And uh, especially if you liked it, especially if you're still watching. And uh, that's it. We're going to see you guys tomorrow. Thanks again for watching. And uh, love you guys. And uh, peace. And also, go ahead. I was going to say, also, comment down there in the comments about who do you think was stoned the most. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, there you go. There you go. We can do that. All right. Let's, let's take a poll. <laughs> guys, thanks again for watching. And, uh, and that's it. Guys, tomorrow I got an upload on the other channel. And then uh, I don't know if I'm going to upload here on Sunday, but definitely back from Monday Motivation. Again, if you're still watching, God bless you. Peace out. Peace. Have a good one. Bye. All right, how the fuck do I turn this off? Hold on. Oh, there we go. Is that it?